all right so now we've been able to connect to our database and apparently the next thing we need to do is to be able to interact with the database so save some data to the database retrieve data and stuff like that but before we do that there are two things we need to familiarize ourselves with the first is database model and the next is schema these two terms are related so what's a model a model refers to the logical structure or layout of your database and how data will be stored while a schema defines how that data is structured or how that data is organized in the schema is where we are able to define constraints that are applied to our data now this definition i've just given you is what we are going to see practically just in the next moment so let me bring this down and let's show you now in the spirit of separating our you know different components of our application which is a programming concept called separation of concerns i'm going to create a separate folder where our model will be stored so in the back end here i'll create another folder i'll call that model and inside of this model i'll create a model for our task so i'll click here and then i'll say task model dot js now remember we installed a package called mongoose and we said that that package is going to help us interact with our mongodb database so the first thing i'll do is i'll bring in mongoose here right so i'll just say const mongoose and that's going to be equal to require and what we're requiring mongoose as well now that we've brought in mongoose with mongoose we're going to create a schema right so you said you remember we said that the schema is going to determine how we structure the data how we organize the data the constraints that are going to be associated with that data so how do we create a schema well i'll just come here and say const and then i'll specify the name of the schema so i'll just call that task schema c h e m a and that's going to be equal to so we're going to create the schema now mongoose dot the schema um keyword here is going to start with a capital letter okay because it's now a method that is attached to this mongoose so mongoose dot schema so that should be one s sorry about that schema and we're going to open parenthesis inside of this parenthesis we're going to have an object and then inside of the object is where we'll now define the way we want to structure our data so i want this task schema to have a name so the name of the task which i'm going to now come inside here and define the constraints so the first thing i'll say is i want this data type of this name to be a string that string is also going to start with a capital letter so you need to actually be mindful of that then i'll say that i also want it to be required so this is some kind of validation that we are adding to this name field in our task schema so i'll say required and i want that to be true so that the user cannot set an empty field or submit an empty field to our database but what if the user tries to submit an empty field well i would want to maybe give that user some kind of feedback like an error message or something so we can just open an array here and say that okay first off i want this required field to be true then add a comma and say that i want to have an error message an error message like please add a task all right so you see what we just did here great now what other fields do we want this task schema to have well i want to be able to know whether the um task has been completed or not so here i'm going to add a completed property and then i'll just open that up i'm going to give it a type so when a task is completed i'll set it to true when it's not completed i'll set it to false so i'm going to give this a type of boolean so true or false is boolean it's also going to start with a capital letter so boolean i'll add a comma and i want it to be required as well so required and i'll set that to just true then i want it to have a default value so when a user creates a task initially 
I want that task to be set to false. That's the completed status of that task to be set to false. So here I'll say default and I'll set that to false. You see what's going on here? So now this is what is known as the schema, the skeletal structure, how the data is going to be organized before it's stored in the database. Now this schema, however, needs to be inside the model. So let's come down here and I'm going to create a task model. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to come here and say const, or you know what, let me just create a task model first. The way you create that is you say mongoose.model, then you now specify, first of all, the name of the model. So how will that model be stored in the database? I'll give it a name of task. Then I would now attach the schema that I want to, you know, be saved here. So remember, we've created a schema, task schema. So I'll just come here and say task schema. So in our database, we are trying to save a single task using this organization or this structure which is this task schema. All right, now we've created the model. Let me attach this model to a variable name. So I'll say const and I'll give it a variable name of capital letter T A S K, like so. So you see what we just did here. Now I can just go ahead and simply export this task so that I can use it in other parts of my application. How am I going to do that? Remember, we're just going to do model dot exports and that's going to be equal to task. Well, my friends, we've been able to create a model and the schema of the way our data will be stored in the database. Now, before we actually, you know, start using this model, though, there's one more thing I would like us to do, and that is to create a timestamp for this particular schema. So let me break, bring this down here just to, you know, separate it. So you see, inside of this model, mongoose.schema, we created this object uh, inside of it. And then what I'll just do is I'll just add a comma after this closing curly braces. I'll come down and create another curly braces. Inside this curly braces is where I'll now add a time stamp. And then stamps, actually, plural, time stamps. And then I'll set that to true. What this will do is that it will automatically add a time stamp to any data that we try to store in a database that timestamp is going to contain two um, properties the time you created that database and the time you updated that database and it will be automatically generated all right so that's basically what we just want to add to this um schema before we then go ahead and use it in our database all right thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one